waked. My name is Didi DeRose. I'm here at Thompson Rivers University, and we're here to talk about uh, truth and reconciliation. Welcome. White. I'm Ted Godfordson. I'm from the Kamloops. I work here at TRU as the Sequibum Cultural Advisor. And I'm here as the Chancellor of Thompson Rivers University. So we're here today to talk about truth and reconciliation, and Ted and I have been preparing a little bit uh, for it. We thought we would start by both sharing with our audience what the word truth means to us in terms of um, the truth and reconciliation. I worked for my community, the Kamloops de Sequem, for about six years. And within that time, um, we set about performing the work to confirm the less tweak weight. And the truth went far beyond anything we could imagine. Uh, it hit pretty hard uh, to find those children and to finally really find and show where those children are was um, uh, a momentous thing for us. Uh, and I don't mean just to come loops because we all know that all of the children who went there were from from different nations. They were Sequepm, they were in Seal, they were in Shkepm, Tzilkotin, they were in Shkepm, they were various different nations. So it was it was a hard bit of work to do, a uh, hard number to hear. And the sad truth is that those numbers will never be complete. We'll never know the full uh, number, the complete number. That is something that, due to circumstances of that residential school, will never be known. And my truth is similar to Ted's. Uh, my community's Escat, Escato, and we're in northern, in the northern part of the territory, in um, Sequatin territory, and our people always talked about the death of children in the St. Uh, Joseph's. Joseph's Mission. And it was always a truth to us and our elders and our community. Um, however, Canada had never really had to face the truth because we never had proof. So um, as harsh as the truth was when the graves were discovered, for us as Indigenous people, it was confirmation of what we already knew. There was no reason for our people to make those stories up. Um, we've heard in our, throughout our lives stories about our people not coming home um, after going to residential school. So um, finally, we had the truth, and so did Canada. And, and that's, that's the only way you can move forward with reconciliation, is, is to make sure that the truth is spoken uh, so that we can move together forward in a healthier way. One of the terms that I've heard coined since the truth and reconciliation and since the graves um, is nothing about us without us. Yeah. Um, finally, we usually almost always have a place at the table. I think we still have a long ways to go. I, I think that... Um, Canada and the province and our municipal communities are recognizing finally that they need to include us and we need to have a seat. That process of um, us getting healthier as a people, that's a generational process. You know, I look at uh, my mom to me, to my children, to my one grandchild, and the progress that I see in terms of a healthy, happy human being, uh, it takes time to get past uh, the residential school because I know that when my mom and her story is nowhere near uh, singular to her, but when she left the residential school, um, it was literally, out you go, the trauma and damage we caused, don't worry about it, you will just uh, continue on your life best you can, hopefully you get to a point where you have children and you have... Right? All of that stuff that um, she went through in that building, um, she was given no tools, no recognition of the importance of mental health or anything uh, of that nature. So what she has done and what the Les Tuihue have given her, and I'm sure many other 
survivors as well is the vehicle in which she can address those traumas that she has been living with since she was a young girl. So I, I think that, you know, this day of TRC is is really important for not just her and other residential school survivors, but you and I as children of residential residential school survivors. That's a huge day for all of us because we are acknowledging something that... Um, has never been acknowledged. We're looking at making sure that the elders we have left can move forward in a good way, typically our parents and their generation. It's not just a day off, I want to say, right? This day is very meaningful, and it's it's a chance for people to, to look at the history of Canada, to look at uh, the harms that, it, that colonization has had on Indigenous people, it's it's a big day. It's I, I think that it is it's something that I I want to reiterate. It. It's not just a day off. And I don't think of it as a happy day. I no. think of it as a day to reflect on the harms that were done and are continuing to be done in our communities. Um, we both have uh, people very close to us who aren't here because of the the harms that have happened to them. We continue to work really hard on helping our communities as Indigenous people to be healthier. And um, it's one person at a time, one day at a time, because the harms are so deeply ingrained in our communities that we um, are reminded daily of the challenges that face us as Indigenous people, um, because we have a responsibility to work together to move our communities forward. And that's a huge responsibility. And um, that's all due to what happened to our people three generations ago, four generations ago. When my mom talks, she doesn't talk often about her experience in residential school, but when she shares um, the way they were treated, they were treated like people, they were treated like animals. Um, They were a number, in fact, her passcode for all of her uh, banking and all of that is her residential school number because it's so entrenched in her brain. She has many stories of uh, dear friends who she lo- and family who she lost because they didn't have a healthy way to move out of the harms that were done to them in residential school. Yeah, absolutely. My, my mom is the same way, that survivor mentality and her sharing of her time there is limited to um, basically the uh, the happiest story she has is one of starving. The rest, they're of violence, they're of um, abuse. abuse of all kinds. Uh, and it's sad to say that the the best thing that she can come out come out saying is that the least harmful thing was the starvation. And my mom was. Uh very, very sick a few years ago. And when she came, she was hospitalized. And when she came out, and she was home. And a dear friend said to her, why are you so sick? And it was just after the graves were made public. And she said, the Pope did it to me. Um, meaning that the harm was done by the church. And it was coming out in her because it was like a sense of relief that finally... Yeah. Those stories were confirmed. Absolutely. I think um, one of the things that we're seeing nowadays is that realization or the goal of the residential school and the policies that created it to have us lose or have our language and culture taken from us. You know, ac- across the board right now, just about any elder we have is a residential school survivor. And for them, uh, speaking our language, practicing our culture and anything like that is traumatic. All of those things that they went to and, and they were able to maintain the language and, and the culture. And I think that for us as Indigenous people, that's our way, that's our ticket back yeah. to health is, is to relearn our culture, relearn our language, take all of those things back. So that we, because I mean, when Canada decided that was the vehicle or the weapon they were going to use against us, they chose pretty good because that has had generational effects upon our people to take that from us. So for us to get it back, I think, you know, will help us ride our own canoe. So the term was take the Indian out of the child, and that was very common 
within the church and the government, because really the government paid the church yeah. to take us, to take who we were as a people away from us. And so I think it's profound that our languages are still alive. And I think it's, we're so proud because um, you're one of the fluent speakers who have made it your life's goal to relearn our language and use it in conversation in your home and with your family. And I think that that's why um, programs like Thompson Rivers University, the fact that you're employed here, they saw you had a skill set that would um, move Thompson Rivers University in a, in a healthy direction in terms of um, not just truth and reconciliation for our people and making this a safe place for the community, our Indigenous people, but also making sure the community as a whole was more aware of um, what had happened to our people. And you could share your um, leadership in a good way so everybody's comfortable because really two wrongs don't make a right. So yeah. I'm saying, this happened to us. You need to accept that. It's more than that. We need to teach it, and then we need to all join together to move forward. And Absolutely. Having you here and doing that important work, it speaks so loudly to the good work of Thompson Rivers University. And it's also, I'll toot your horn for you, it's also very amazing and says a lot for TRU that you are a second Sukhwapam chancellor that is impressive that that sends the right message that is a positive thing for us to look forward to it's true yeah um, and other universities across british columbia and canada also are recognizing that um, the important uh, role of chancellor needs to be uh, indigenous in fact the government of canada our governor general is indigenous She's getting lots of criticism and lots of people who have things to say, but the Canada did the right thing for a change yeah. and put the right person, a woman, in the role of uh, Governor General. And it makes me so happy because now our kids can see, look, you too could do this. Same as where you, the role you have. You too could get a doctorate like mm -hmm. you're getting shortly. You too can do all these great things it's it's no longer those indigenous people they're a um, burden to our community now we're being seen as change makers and it's an exciting time absolutely work to do but yeah we'll get there i agree yeah